Hello, Haiti. Or hi. Hello, how are you, Heidi? I'm happy to be back. Oh, good. I am too. I'm happy to see you guys. Okay, wow. So you're you're the only one that's <laughs> so far. <laughs> oh my. The others are still on vacation. <laughs> exactly. Oh my. Wow. And well, Natalie's gonna join us very soon when her audio gets connected. Let's see. Hello, Natalie. Can you hear us? Hello. Yeah, yeah, I can hear us okay. right now here. Good, oh, good. Hi. Hi, Natalie. Nice. Hi. We're only, we only only two. Three? <laughs> Three of us. We are oh, Heidi. Hi, Heidi. Yeah. How are you, Natalie? Oh, there's we are very, very responsible. <laughs> yes, you are the responsible ones. Yeah. Good for you. Woo. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, also Yvonne. Welcome, Yvonne. Yvonne, can you hear me? Is Yvonne here? No. Yvonne? She's connecting, I guess. No. She well, no, I, I think she's already connected. Yeah, she seems to be already connected. Okay. Well, thank you, girls, for being on time and being very responsible. That's what it's all about. That's what it shows. Like when you, um, you know, when you really are interested in something, it shows, right? So good for you. Um, you know, I, I really thank you, girls. Oh, there is Irvin. Hello, Irvin. Oh, he hasn't. Hello, Irvin. Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Oh, now All right. Yes. Good. Sorry. That's Sorry. Okay. How are you, teacher? Good. How are you? Fine, fine. How was Good. it? You, uh, how was it your vacation? Um. Well, um, I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> Why? Uh. Well, because I really didn't. I. I had a vacation, but I didn't have a vacation. Um, because I, I had a vacation uh, from the from the night classes, but uh, my daytime job, no vacation. So, yeah. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, jury. Sorry, yeah. teacher. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Well, that's life. You know, that's the, you know. Yeah, sorry, true. teacher. Yeah, but well, I got paid double. <laughs> so, I guess that's the only thing that that um that makes up for it <laughs> yeah. yeah but it was it was nice to relax you know a little bit at night you know well um i finished my daytime job and then i was free so that was nice that was okay nice. yeah how about okay. you Irvin? how was your vacation tell me about it in the work in the work in the work my business never closed really never never closed Oh, I, wow. open, I open on Monday to Sunday, all days in the year. Wow. Yeah, the normal. So for, it, it, it for the type of the business, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're time. right. It's yeah. true. Yeah, sometimes uh, certain businesses have to continue open. Kind of like, a, for example, food businesses, right? Food businesses are always open <laughs> because everybody yeah. eats. You know, no yeah. matter, and people eat more during the vacation. So, yes. yeah, yeah. Yes. Supermarkets also they don't never never wow. close, right? Exactly, yeah. supermarkets, have, you know, open twenty four seven. Well, not twenty four seven, but yeah, three hundred and sixty five days a year. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, hospitals think about hospitals well yes too. That, that's that's why my job never has a, I, ne I never finish because i always have like there's emergencies there are you know so even if it's a holiday there's always going to be people that are hospitalized and emergencies and that's just life <laughs> yeah yes. 
What about the others? Tell me, what did you guys do on your vacation? Tell me about it. Come on, guys, tell me. Hello. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Well, for me, for the guest. Hello. Yes, Natalie? Yes. In, in my case, my, my vacation was very short because um, my family, <laughs> we were sick, uh, a little sick with flu. Mm -hmm. uh, right now I have some, some flu. Oh. It's not COVID. <laughs> but, it's a, not COVID. But, but it's not okay because... Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry to hear mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that sucks. So it was very, very short. But it, uh, we visit the uh, uh, cave, uh, Cabana Cave in Lesbian. Cave. We was in a, a, a cave, in a cave in Apaneca, mm -hmm. but for two days. Oh, nice. Nice. Interesting. A cave in Apaneca. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, what about the others? Tell me, what did you do? Uh, um, Jose, what did you do? I only have two days of vacation because the rest of the days I have to work. So I only went with my family to the beach on Friday. And on Saturday, we visited a pool. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. What beach That's did you it. go to? Uh, we went to La Libertad, and the name is, uh, I don't remember the name of the beach, but it's in La Libertad. Oh, okay. Okay, nice. Did you like it? Nice yeah, beach. I like it. Uh, yeah, I really like the beach. Okay, good. Excellent. All right. And what about um, Heidi? What did you do? For me? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I only rested on Friday because it's the national day. But oh. the rest of the week, I worked even yesterday. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Even yesterday, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Do you work on Sundays normally? You, not usually. Uh -huh. Okay. But we had this, uh, uh, we were trying out a new product. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So there was a new event. I see. Okay. All right. Um, well, guys, um, before it gets too late, I'm going to pass the attendance. I'm going to take the attendance right now. So, all right. Let's see. Um, all right. So, our first on the list, we know Ana Claudia. <laughs> Present teacher. All right. Welcome. Habit. Is Habit here? No? Okay. All right. How about Andres? Está dando problema el enlace, fíjese, teacher, de, de entrar. No sé por qué. A mí me costó un mundo entrar. ¿En serio? Sí. Y Wendy ya había puesto también que le estaban costando entrar. No sé. Lo, bueno, yo hubiera puesto algo más. ¿no? Pero. Ah, quiero ver. Pero, ver. No he visto. Sí, quizás no. Pero sí costó un poquito al inicio. A saber, cosas del sistema. Ya nos hackearon el link también. <ríe> a mentir. <ríe> Con tantas cosas. Hay banco agrícola. No, pero no es el banco. Son las cuentas de Microsoft y Outlook. Es, o sea, ya viene el nuevo sistema operativo. Pasa lo mismo cada vez que... Si no había yeah. trabajado... No, yo he trabajado con, con computadoras ahí, señales. Y, hey, um, Heidi, ¿a usted le, le costó entrar? Porque usted entró en Cusón antes que yo. No, realmente. ¿No? Ah, pues, entonces ya. Y Natalie... Ojalá que no le cueste a los demás. A Natalie, no, no, no le costó. No, I have no problem, but the, but the internet is very slow. I don't no, know. It, I don't it might be a connection problem. It, it Quizá, might be verdad. The internet, yeah into the internet connection. Sure, in my in my case, yes, I I I try three times. Yeah, it, it could be it could be a, a like um um an internet connection problem or I, I, problem. I don't I I think no because uh, the link say me uh, 
don't don't um i don't know how do you what do you say uh, no me enlazaba con zoom but i don't know what happened oh okay yes all right well then we are here, here. <laughs> That's important. Yeah, yeah. Here. But I hear that HPN. <laughs> I hear. Okay, okay. All right. Well, let me continue with my attendance, okay? And okay. this is Andres here. Andres? I see Andres is connected, but I just don't see him. Oh, there he is. Hello, Andres. Welcome. Thanks. Okay, Dennis, I guess is not. Edgar Menjivar, are you here? Uh, good evening, teacher. Oh, Hi. Good evening. Oh, you, you have a new background. Yes, yes, teacher. <laughs> okay, all right, sounds good. Um, what about, uh, well, the Jorleni, I guess, no. Uh, Irvin? Present, teacher. All right, welcome, Irvin. Thank you, teacher. Fabiola, I guess not. Um, no. Heidi? Present teacher. All right, excellent. Irene? Present teacher. Okay, excellent. Welcome. Ivan? Ivan? No, Ivan? Okay. All right, what about Josue? Present teacher. All right, welcome, Josue. Juan Francisco. Juan Francisco? Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Uh, Jerry. Present teacher. All right. Welcome, Jerry. Thank you. And Luis? Present teacher. Welcome, Luis. Thank you. I guess Manuel Alejandro, no. Natalia? Present teacher. All right, welcome. And Wendy? Oh, present teacher. All right, good, she made it. <laughs> Werner? Present teacher. All right, welcome, Werner. And Yvonne? Present. All right, welcome, Yvonne. Thank you. What teacher. about Edgar? Edgar Enriquez? Edgar Enriquez? No, okay. And what about uh, El, Eli? No? Uh, Jose Montes? Jose Montes? Okay. And Jose Ayala? Present teacher. All right, excellent. Okay, let me just uh, mention again the names I didn't hear, which were Javit and Dennis. Edith Jorleni, Fabiola, Ivan, Juan Francisco, eh, Manuel Alejandro, Edgar Enriquez, Eli, and Jose Montes. Am I right? I didn't miss anybody? Okay, good. All right. Guys, before we begin, let me ask you, um, well, actually, I'm going to say this in Spanish. I, I, I want you guys open discussion, so I just want to make sure. Uh, primero que nada, eh, ¿ya entregamos documentos? Yes, teacher. In my case, I sent, ya envié todo. Ya enviamos todo? Okay. But, ¿saben qué? Eh, Teacher, una pregunta, perdone, y usted no tiene acceso a ver quién es, porque yo al de, de Recursos Humanos de la compañía ya le escribí, no me contesta, yeah. ya Me le either. pregunté, ajá, ya le pregunté, ajá, con José trabajamos en lo mismo, con Jonathan, el de Inglés Corporativo también ya pregunté, nadie me contesta, entonces quiero asegurarme si, si ya mandaron nuestros papeles, usted no tiene acceso a ver si, quiénes faltan. Que este que lastimosamente no, no tengo... No. Eso es información. Vaya, vaya. Pues continuemos mañana con Daniel José. <risa> yeah. Ok. Eh, vaya. Lo importante es de que estén en comunicación ahí con uh -huh. um, su compañía. Uh -huh. ¿Verdad? Eh, a ver qué. Um, 
¿Cuándo es que tenemos como fecha para que se entre en esos documentos? Porque igual tengo que preguntar a Recursos Humanos si ya los envío. Mañana al mediodía. Ok. Yo le hablo a la chica de Recursos. Um, sure. Teacher, in my case today, in Human Resources, the girl informed me that the, this sense um, two weeks ago, all the documents. So in my case, I work to Niban. I work, uh, uh -huh, so I say it's the same. But informing that two weeks ago, send the, the document. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay, well, let's do something. I'm going to actually, I'll make it a little bit. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit easier uh, for everybody. Um, to be able to um, to give me your answer. Okay, so vamos a ver quiénes son los que han entregado ya los documentos. Um, hold on, give me a moment. Hmm. Just give me a second. I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do right now is, um, is launch a poll so that I can, I can get a better idea of, ah, okay, yeah, got it, now I got it. Okay, so here we go. I'm launching the poll. Uh, please um, take the poll and um, check the answer that best applies to you. Okay, I have two participants who haven't answered yet. Todavía tengo dos que no me han respondido. Uno, uno más me falta. Okay, thank you. All right, so. We're gonna end the poll. I'm gonna share results. Okay, so here are your results. Um, so half of the class has um, said yes, which is great. But we have um, two people that, um, that for sure know they haven't. And then we have five people that are not sure. So that means we have seven people in total that are still Basically, it's, it's pretty much a no, because if you're not sure, we're going to treat it as a no. That means, bye. Eh, acuérdense lo que el, hemos hablado en el pasado, ¿verdad? Que eh, para que podamos nosotros ir avanzando, es importante que entregamos los documentos um, todos a tiempo. Entonces, lo que sucede es de que ahorita, como estamos, eh, eh, si, pues no, si, si todos no entregan su documento a tiempo, vamos atrasando el proceso, ¿verdad? Y como les explicaba anteriormente, entonces el diplomado se hace más largo, ¿verdad? Porque tienen que esperar más tiempo para que pues luego se pueda abrir el próximo curso. Entonces, eh, esos siete um, alumnos que, o oh, participantes que aún no están seguros, eh, podrían uno um, asegurarse de mandarlo mañana a, a primera hora porque tiene que ser antes del, medio, del mediodía o dos llamar a su, a su 
a los recursos humanos de su empresa y asegurar si hacer la expresión a primera hora también. Sería, eh, ¿Podría yo tener el compromiso de ustedes? Miss Jessica, en mi caso, la empresa lo hace automáticamente. No sé, digo que no estoy seguro porque, o sea, no he consultado, pero casi siempre lo hacen a tiempo. Ok, excelente. Ah, pues hágame un favor, um, Josué. ¿Será posible que a primera hora de mañana pueda usted uh, preguntar ahí a Recursos Humanos y asegurarse <risa> o, o a Inglés Corporativo? ¿verdad? Pero, um, pero lo más seguro es que, que lo haga con su empresa. ¿Verdad? ¿Será posible hacer eso? Claro, o sea, creería que sí, porque casi siempre, o sea, ya son cinco cursos y ellos lo hacen siempre con mucho tiempo de anticipación. Ah, vaya, excelente, ah, pues sí, entonces, sí, el, lo, lo bueno es que hay, hay ciertas empresas que ustedes ya saben quiénes son, ¿verdad? Que a veces um, hay ciertas empresas que hacen las cosas con mucha antelación, excelente. Si su empresa es así, lo más probable es de que, que sí, eh, pues ya lo tengamos. Pero si usted sabe que su empresa es de las eh, es de, de las empresas que tienden a mandar las cosas a última hora o se les olvida ¿verdad? porque tienen tantas cosas a veces es que tienen demasiadas cosas y pendiente y eso es como lo último que se les, se les ocurre verdad lo último que, que si uno no está ahí como empujando se les olvida entonces si usted, su compañía es de esas verdad que tiene que tener un poquito de presión pues por favor asegúrense a primera hora mañana verdad que, que se haya mandado verdad y para las y para los que definitivamente no lo han hecho uh, la pregunta es creen ustedes que podríamos tenerlo ya para mañana al mediodía sí eh, teacher en mi caso eh, como dice Josué mi compañía siempre es de las que manda todos los documentos a, a tiempo uh -huh. Pero como nosotros estuvimos una semana de vacaciones, uh -huh. entonces tal vez por eso se ha atrasado, pero el día de hoy me hablaron de inglés corporativo para preguntarme si iba a continuar. Uh -huh. eh, y cuando yo les confirmé, me dijeron que ellos se iban a comunicar con la persona encargada de enviar toda la documentación de la empresa para que requerirle los documentos necesarios para poder enviarlos para inscribirme en el siguiente módulo. Ok, excelente, excelente. Me parece muy bien. Ahora, no estaría de más que se, se asegurara, ¿verdad? Nuevamente, uh -huh. ¿verdad? Porque eh, pues eh, ya a, a veces si pues, hay un doble recordatorio, es mejor ¿verdad? para que ellos como que sienten un poquito más presuncita y así puedan um, hacerlo más rápido, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Ok, sí. excelente. Bueno, Ok, entonces espero chicos que podamos um, tener el compromiso de parte de, um, de ustedes para que podamos eh, meter todos los documentos a tiempo y así de esa forma podemos um, seguir, continuar sin una interrupción, ¿verdad? O, o sin mucha interrupción, porque el problema es que a veces nos atrasamos y ustedes ya saben, ya nos ha pasado en el, de que hasta dos semanas estamos ahí esperando y esas son dos semanas que vamos atrasándonos y si en cada modo vamos atrasando dos semanas, entonces, como les decía anteriormente, el proceso del, 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 del diplomado va alargándose también, va Ok, bueno, entonces en ese caso, eh, como dicen, manos a la obra. We're going to start. Uh, with our class, so I'm going to um, be, I'm going to stop sharing the results and we're going to, um, I'm going to show you our PowerPoint. Please tell me if you can see the PowerPoint. Okay, here we go. Can you see it? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, good. All right, so this is the intermediate module one, unit three, monitoring personnel. And today is uh, Monday, August 9th, 2021, uh, day number 19. Facilitator Jessica Guerrero. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is first we're going to start learning about well in the past we've learned how to compare three people sorry sorry two people or two things right we for example when you say um um my my current house is bigger 
than my last house, right? My current job, my current um, house is bigger than my last house. So you are comparing the two houses, the one you have right now and the one that you used to have, right? So you're comparing two. Or you can say, for example, I don't know, Marina is taller than Josefina, okay? So um, you are comparing two people. Or um, so, you know, we've learned about that in the past, right? Uh, sorry, yeah, in the past, we learned about how comparing two things or two people. Today, we're going to be learning about comparing three things or three people or more, okay? Not just three, we can do more, okay? So it could be it could be only three or it could be an infinite amount. Niña, ya venga a dormirse. Ah, me traje un cuchillo porque si no, no voy or it could also be an infinite amount of people or things that we are comparing. For example, imagine if we were going, if we're talking about the Guinness World Records, you guys know the Guinness World Records, right? So when you are comparing, when you're doing the Guinness World Records, you're talking about all, you're comparing all the people on this planet. So that's a lot of people, right? And so you're saying that somebody has the most of something. So let's take a look at that right now. How do we compare three people or things? Well, we use what we call superlative. It's the superlative form. Okay, this is the superlative form. Before we learned about the comparative form, this is the superlative form. So it says use the superlative form of adjectives to compare more than two persons or things in a group, okay? So um, can I have somebody read this part here? A volunteer to read this side? I can do. Okay, thank you, go, go over it. Okay, uh, since Jackie, right? Uh, Jack. Uh -huh. Okay, perfect. Jack is the fastest server. That was the saddest moment in the ship. The business hour is during lunch. The most interesting customers come to our restaurant. Okay. And the other box, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The superlative point for one syllable adjectives is made of the plus adjective plus EST. Adjectives that are two or more syllables, long use, the plus most plus adjective for the superlative form. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, and we pronounce this busiest busiest mm -hmm. okay busiest um okay so very good excellent so this is um, teacher yes the busiest is uh come up busy no yeah it comes from the verb busy correct yes okay uh, so this comes from the word busy. Okay. Teacher, and busy is considered one syllable adjective. No, no, um, it's considered two because it's busy. Two, busy. Yes. It's exactly. that the, the rule says the superlative form for one syllable adjective is made of the adjective plus EST. Right. Or is that uh, yeah. Um, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Okay. So, okay. So let's put this in a box. So the structure is, so using the word the, we always use the word the, plus the adjective, plus EST. This is applicable when we are talking about 
one syllable adjectives. Okay. Now, when we have two or more syllable adjectives, then the structure is going to be hold on. Structure is going to be the plus most plus the adjective. We don't do anything to the adjective. We just keep the adjective the same. Okay. So to give you, so if you if you notice, um, for example, fast. Okay, let's think, take the, the verb, uh, the adjective fast. Fast is one syllable. So we say the fastest that follows this rule using the word the and the adjective fast. And then we just add EST, right? Okay, right there, we're just adding EST. Okay, now with the verb, with the adjective, sorry, with the adjective interesting has. Um, how many syllables does interesting have? Four. Three? Four. Four. In thirsty. Three or four? In thirsty. In thirsty. Maybe three? No. In thirsty. I don't know. Okay. All right. So that's a, that's a very tricky one, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, well, first of all, we have to remember that in English, some, some um, letters are not pronounced, okay? So in the word, in, in this word particularly, we do not pronounce it interesting. We be, why don't we not pronounce it interesting? It's because uh, we, well, actually, let me write the word so you can see it. I think it'll be better if I write it. Um, so the word is in. So what happens is that the word, the, the E is silent. We eliminate, sorry, the E is silent. Okay. Um, Interesting. Mm. All right, the E is silent here. And um, so that means that we do not say interesting. It actually becomes in trust. Sorry, interesting. So the, 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 since we eliminate the E in, uh, when we say it, we actually make the second syllable in, into tres. So in interesting. interesting. So how many syllables does it have? Three. 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 Exactly. So it's three syllables. So that is why you will notice that uh, with the with in, with interesting we say the most interesting. It follows this rule: the plus most plus adjective, right? So we have the most, and the adjective is interesting. Okay. So there you go. Now, uh, who uh, who was it? Um, was it Heidi? Mm -hmm. You you made the observation about about busy. Was it was it you? Yes, it was me. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Heidi made this observation. She said, "Okay, well, uh, so busiest comes from busy, right?" So is it a, well, we're not using the word most. So does that mean that it's a one syllable adjective? No, because busy, if you think about it, is two adjectives, right? Busy, busy. So two, two, two adjectives, sorry, right. two, two, syllables. Two, syllables. <laughs> two syllables, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so two syllables. Now, so then why does it follow the word, follow this, the first rule and not the second one? It's because all, uh, some, it's one of the, the, uh, the rules. And then why, maybe. What, one of the rules that is not mentioned in this table, but does exist and you do have to follow, is that when we have two syllable adjectives that finish in Y, we we follow the rule the same rule as one syllable okay so all those adjectives such as like 
busy or ugly or um, pretty or um, what else? What ugly, pretty, uh, busy, easy. Okay, easy. So all of these are two syllable adjectives, but all of them finish in Y. So if you notice, you say ugly, so two syllables, right? Pretty, two syllables. EZ, two syllables, right? BZ, two syllables. So all of these ones that are two syllables and finish in a Y, what we do is we, we actually use the first uh, rule, not the second, but the first. Does that make sense? Yes. Teacher, is correct uh, pretty or pretty? Well, it's going to depend on where you're from. Right, so um, if you're from the UK, you're probably going to say pretty, right? And if you're from the United States or Canada, you're probably going to say pretty. So it's oh. all going to depend on where you are from. Okay. okay. All right. Any other questions that you guys have? Okay. All right. And there's one more rule that is also not stated here, but it's, even though it's not stated, but it is uh, exemplified. And that is with the rule for, that we see here. So if you notice, sad, um, sad, uh, we say the saddest, okay? So um, actually, and what do you notice about, what is different from that structure? Double D. Right, exactly. There's something different there. And the difference is that with this one, we have a double D. Now, why would you have a double D? Anybody have any guesses why we're gonna be using a double D? No? Okay. Well, it's because it has to do with, and I think I, if I'm not mistaken, I have talked about this in the past. Have I ever told you about the rule that I like to call the one, one, one? Have I ever told you about the rule, the one, one, one? No, I don't remember to hear. No? Never? Yes, teacher. Yes. You remember? Yeah. I think I have them. Uh, I, I kind of remember um, that I, I talked about this probably very briefly, but I do remember I talked about it. But anyways, uh, I'll repeat it. Basically, this is a rule. I mean, it's not technically called 111, right? But I like to call it the, the 111. Why? Because you're going to be looking for three things. They're all number ones, okay? The first thing is that is one syllable. Okay, like for example, like sad in this case, okay. or um, or fat, or um, tall. Oh um, no, hold on. Um, hmm? Sorry. Wrong. Wrong. Big. 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 Okay. Uh huh. Big. And what was the other one I didn't hear very well? Wrong. Wrong. E. How do you spell it? C. C E E. C E E. Perdón. Or S E. Sorry, sorry. S S E E. Oh, S E Z. Okay, okay, I got. It. Um, yes, that is true, but. Um, that is not an adjective. That would be an, a verb, right? C oh. is a verb. Oh, okay. 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 Mm. okay. So we can have sad, fat, big, um, thin. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. With all these types of verbs, sorry, of, of adjectives, I'm sorry. 
with all these type of adjectives, if you notice, we have one syllable, sad, fat, thin, big, thin. Also, that's one. The other thing that you will notice is they all finish in one vowel and one consonant. So here we have A is the vowel, one vowel, and one consonant, D. And then here again, A, one vowel, and over here, one consonant, T. Over here, one vowel, I, and one consonant, G. And then here again, one vowel I and one consonant N, okay? So that's why I like to call it the rule of the one, 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 because it has to, the rule has to be, there is one syllable and it finishes in one vowel and one consonant, only one. If it finishes in two vowels, it does not apply. The rule does not apply. If it finishes in two consonants, the rule does not apply either. Sounds good? Yes? Does that make sense for everybody? Yes. Teacher, in, in case of tall? In the case of tall, it does not apply because tall is spelled T-A-L-L. -L, and in that case, we have a double L, right? And so in that okay. case, it's not one, one, one. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, with these types of adjectives that are that follow that rule of the one, 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 what we're going to do is we're going to be doubling the the consonant. Okay. So instead of saying um, just sad, we have sad with the double D. Okay. And this one would be fat with double T. And this would be G with the double G. Sorry, big with double G, sorry. And then this would be thin with the double N. Okay. And then after we've done that, we follow, we continue following this rule. So you would end up with EST. Okay. So it'd be the saddest, the fattest, the biggest, and ojo with it, ojo con esto, como dice en español. That's actually the reason why there's a there's a restaurant called biggest. Right, because um, what they're saying is like we are comparing ourselves to all the restaurants and we are the biggest, right? Okay, and then we have thin, thinnest. Okay, okay, teacher, uh, I have a question. Sure, uh, the, the colors can be uh, adjectives, for okay. example, red house or yellow car? Um, yes, mm -hmm. the reddest, yes, uh, okay. red. Okay. Our, red follows that, that um, rule, right? Because red is one syllable and it finishes in an E, one, one vowel, and a D, one syllable. So yes. Okay, yeah, that thank works. you. You're welcome, okay. So does that make sense for everybody? Do we understand that rule? Or is it, you know, very confusing what I just explained? So far so good? Yes? Yes, yes teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. All right. And yes, Andres, fun also applies in this, um, in this rule. Fun, funnest, right? So we have to, when we um, use the adjective fun, it has one syllable, finishes in one vowel U, and finishes in one consonant N, right? So we would double the N and put EST. So it's fun would be, um, the, the superlative form of fun would be funnest, just like I have written in the chat. Okay. Richard, mm -hmm. I don't understand why fastest don't is not not have a double t why 
Because in the case of fast, and I'm going to write, I'll write it over here because I have space. I'm starting to run out of, okay. So in the case of the word fast. It's ending in two consonants. Exactly, it doesn't follow the rule because it has, it, it is one syllable, fast, and it finishes in one vowel, A, but in this case, it has two um, consonants, which are S and T. So it doesn't follow the rule of the one, one, one. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, teacher, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, anything else, any other questions that you guys have about this? Okay, so that's about this side, but we haven't talked about this side. So I need a volunteer to help me read this side. Volunteer? I can. Okay. Um, kitchen managers have the best schedules. I usually receive the worst tips. Adjectives like good and bad are called irregular adjectives because their superlative forms do not follow the EST rule. Thank you, very good. So uh, the, these sentences come from the word good and bad. Now, make sure that you understand that the superlative form of um, hold on. The superlative form of good is Best. not is not goodest, mm. right? And the superlative form of bad is not baddest. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, got it. So got it. Th th this is incorrect. Yes, teacher. This is incorrect. Like, I mean, normally it would fall, if we would follow this rule, that's how they would be, right? The goodest, the baddest, right? But I'm telling you that these are irregular verbs. Sorry, for um, adjectives. <laughs> adjectives. Right? Uh -huh. Irregular adjectives. Um, and that is why we do not use that form. So this is incorrect. So instead, the best, the, the, the form, the superlative form of good is? Best. Best. Best, best exactly. So it's the best. And the superlative form of bad is? Worst. Worst. The worst, exactly. The worst. All right? Because they're irregular. There, and there are more, there are more irregulars. For example, far. Okay. Um, actually, let me write here. I think it'll be better. Far. We don't say the forest. Farther. Exactly. It becomes far this, this. Okay. Also, it's possible to say furthest. Do you know why? No. What's the difference between farthest and furthest? Anybody have an idea? I don't know. I, I think honest, it's not a synonymous. For me, it's the one same. Is from US and the other for United Kingdom. <laughs> that's the only thing I can. Uh, that's, a, that's a fair guess. That's a fair mm -hmm. guess. Um, but no, no. Actually, it has to do with the context of the word far. Mm -hmm. uh, because remember that far doesn't always have the same context. For example, far, we can be talking about distance, right? And I can say, uh, for example, um, if I was going to compare, uh, I don't know, 
let's say I'm, com I'm comparing uh, cities, like cities in a country. Okay, no. sure. For example, I'm comparing um, Santa Ana, or better said, so I'm comparing the distance between um, San Salvador and Santa Ana and the, dis the distance between um, San Salvador and uh, Samuel. Which one, which one is, has a bigger distance? San Miguel. San Miguel is right. mm -hmm. So we can say San Miguel is farthest, farthest away from San Salvador than um, Santana, mm -hmm. right? We're comparing the distance. But far doesn't always talk about distance. Sometimes far, we can be using it in a more me metaphorical kind of way. Um, for example, we can say, um, um, I want to go very far in my studies. To go far in your studies, right? Like in Spanish, ir lejos en mis estudios. Are we talking about distance? Mm -mm. No, right? It's something more metaphorical, right? Okay. So in that case, we would use furthest okay the furthest i've gone in my studies is having a bachelor's degree the next thing i want to do is get a master's okay yeah so we say the furthest the furthest i've gone the you furthest. Farthest. And furthest. Then the farthest exactly. farthest exactly mm -hmm. okay does that make sense for everybody the difference between yes, farthest and furthest? Yes, teacher. Yes? Mm -hmm. OK. All right, good. And um, yeah, so those are some of the exceptions. Now, um, so I've now that I've explained the theory behind it, let's give you some more context and so that you guys can understand this a little better. So. Um, Let's do some examples. The runt of the litter is the smallest. The smallest. So we're comparing all the little, all the animals to the runt. Okay. Jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system. So we're comparing all the planets in our solar system to Jupiter. Mount Everest is the highest mountain in the world. We're comparing Mount Everest to all the mountains in the world. She is the smartest girl in our class. We're comparing that girl, that, that one, the she, with all the other girls in our class. I am the shortest person in my family. So I'm comparing myself to all the people in my family. Okay, so far so good? Oops, sorry. So far so good? Yeah? Yes, the train. Yes. So basically, this one is following the first, the, the first, um, the first rule, right? The plus adjective plus EST. And in, in some of them, we're, we're going to be using the double, right? It's like, like biggest, right? But mo mostly we're just following this, the plus adjective, the plus EST, the smallest, the biggest, the highest, the smartest, the shortest. Notice small, big, high, smart, short, they're all one syllables, okay? Now let's look at the second, uh, the, let's look at actually, um, and this is another one that is uh, an irregular, the least. Jerry is the least worried about the game. Okay, The least worry. Here, is the least is the superlative form of less. Okay, less. So the, the, the past, uh, sorry, the, um, the superlative of least, uh, sorry, of less is least. This is the most interesting book 
I have ever read. Most interesting. Notice again, the interesting has three syllables. Interesting, right? So that's why we follow the second row. Sam is the most handsome boy in the whole school. Handsome, two syllables, right? And it does not finish in a Y, so it's going to follow the second row. I can't find my most comfortable jeans. Most comfortable jeans. Comfortable. Notice it's not comfortable. Okay? Stop, stop saying comfortable. It's comfortable. Just like interesting, we eliminate syllables. Sorry, we eliminate letters so that we can eliminate the syllable. So it's not comfortable. It's comfortable. Comfortable. Three syllables. But still, since it's three syllables, it follows the second rule. So my most comfortable jeans. Now, in this case, we use instead of the word the, because notice the rule is using the word the, but instead of the word the, we use which word? My. My. Teacher, can you, can you pronounce it again? Sure. Comfort. Comf 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 no. Comf Comfortable. Comfortable. Ter um, I oye la R, porque yo hace comfortable. Se tiene que ir la R. Yeah. So I would say that it's like this. Comf. I would pronounce it like this. Um, come ter bowl. Uh, um, uh, I would be like that. Come ter bowl. Pero si en el escrito está la R antes de la T, se pronuncia como después. Again, once again, uh, this is. Remember, English is not yeah. uh, it's it's not it's not a phonetic um, language. Mm. Okay, all right. So come, yeah, you're gonna um, you're gonna find many words in English <laughs> that don't make sense uh, when you pronounce uh. it. Uh, sorry, yeah, pronunciation is so different from spelling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. And when and something you have to understand is that also in, in and this happens in not only in English, but in many languages that originally when the when the when the word was created or, you know, when it came into the language, it was pronounced a certain way. But then as time went on and people started um, saying the word and little by little the pronunciation got um it, you know it it it's it, um it changed with time and then nowadays we pronounce it differently than uh it was originally intended to be pronounced okay mm -hmm. so okay. that's something you got to take into consideration as well that is some one thing is um how it was originally meant to be pronounced and the other one is how it's pronounced in our everyday modern language mm -hmm. okay okay got it all right and so going back to this um we do not use the word that but instead we use a possessive adjective which is the word my okay so it's also possible it's instead of using the word that we can use a possessive um, adjective to show that um, it, to to show that that um, um, let's say that in that article right if it's instead of that article we use the demonstrative pronoun okay and then finally um, on. the movie was the best movie ever the best okay again so it's uh in it's an irregular so we we don't say the goodest we say the best 
that was the best movie ever. Not that was the goodest movie ever. Okay, oops. So what do you guys think about this? Does this make sense for everybody or are you lost? It's okay, teacher. Yeah. I'm just thinking if the list for irregular adjectives will be similar, like irregular verbs, long. <laughs> no. No. Um, there's only like, I, I would say in total, probably about, I don't know, digging like really deep, probably about seven or eight. Oh, really? Awesome. Yeah. The, the, the most common How many? Are, I, I would say like probably at most eight, um, probably less, but less than most, 10, less, less, less than the way, less yeah. than 10. Uh, but the most common are good, bad, far, mm. least. Okay. More. Okay. Mm hmm Okay. All right. That's it then. So having said that, uh, can we move on? Or do you have any questions that you want to ask before we move on? No. Okay. All right. Well, it's time for, it's that time uh, for us to take our attendance again. So let's do that. Um, All right, so here we go. Uh, Ana Claudia. Yes, I'm teacher. Habit. No. Andres. Yes, I'm teacher. Great. Uh, Dennis, Orlando, I guess not, right? Uh, Edgar Alfredo. Uh, Edith. Torleni. No. Urban. Urban Lagos. No. Present teacher. Okay. Present teacher. There you go. Perfect. Uh, Fabiola, I guess not. Uh, Heidi? Present. Irene? Present. Ivan? Ivan? No. Uh, Josue? Present teacher. All right. Uh, Juan Francisco? No. Juan Francisco? No, no, okay. Um, jury? Yes, sir, teacher. Uh, Luis? Great teacher. Okay, great. Uh, Manuel Alejandro, I guess not. Natalie? Hi, teacher. Present. All right. Um, uh, Wendy? Present. Okay, Warner? Present teacher. Good. Uh, Yvonne? Present. Okay. Um, Edgar Enriquez? Eli? Jose Montes? Jose Ayala? Present teacher. All right, excellent. Okay, thank you guys. All right, let's return to our class. Okay, so now that we have been able to explain this, it's time for us to put into practice. So, underline the correct word or phrase. The most important or the more important thing is to find a substitute for sick employees. Don't use the best or don't use the goodest schedules as a reward. Jane is the fastest, or Jane is fastest waitress. Delivery orders are the most popular or delivery order are the more popular right now. This restaurant has the prettiest or this restaurant has the most pretty decorations. And find the kitchen manager works for the longest or the kitchen manager works 
uh, longest shifts. Okay, so I want you to do this individually. It shouldn't take you very long. Go ahead and underline. Okay, are you guys finished? Or do you need more time? Okay. All right. So I take it that everybody's finished? Yeah? Okay. All right, I'm going to take it as that everybody's finished. Yes, the chat. All right, excellent. So we're going to check the answers. Oh. All right, here we go. So I'm going to choose different people. So let's have uh, Warner help us with number one, Warner. This teacher. The fears, huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the most important um, thing is the find substitute for seat employees. Okay, good. Substitute. Substitute. Subs, no, not sub, substitute. Substitute. Yes. Very good. Teach. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's move on. We'll have, um, let's see. Um, Josue, help us with number two. So use the best schedules as a uh, reward. Okay, thank you, the best. Okay, very good. Um, Irvin, help us up with um, number three. Jane is the fastest waiters. Jane, yes, is the fastest waiters. Okay, waitress. Waitress, yes. Wait, waitress. Waitress, yes, sorry, waitress. Waitress. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. How about number four? We'll have a uh, jury help us with number four. Delivery, delivery orders are the most popular, popular right now. Okay, thank you. And let's have, um, see, um, Jose, Jose help us out with number five, please. Okay, the restaurant has the prettiest decoration. Okay, all right, thank you. Let me put this nicer. Teacher, mm -hmm. with that, with the pretty is, is a bear, is like an adjective two syllables or one syllable? Pretty, no. Two syllables, but it finishes in a Y. Pretty finishes in a Y. And a Y. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And Andres, can you help us out with the last one, Andres? Okay. 
Um, I think we're having trouble with the microphone on, um, on this. Do you want to write in the chat? Because I can't hear you very well. Okay. All right. So he says the longest. And all right. So here we go. All right. So what do you guys think about these um, answers? Do you agree with them? Anybody want to change something else? No, teacher. No? I agree. You agree? OK, you know what? I, I also agree. You guys got it. Very good. Okay, so all of them are correct. Excellent, bravo. Okay, so um, so now now we've done this. Let's move on to the next part. Okay, so let's go on to the next part, which is your turn. Work in your assigned breakout room with a partner. So you're gonna be working with one partner. Discuss which of these strategies you and your partner consider effective to avoid overstaffing and understaffing. Okay, so overstaffing, remember overstaffing means to put more people than more personnel in the rest, in the, in the business than you need. Okay, so more people that are working that you know that you don't really need, and that that have, that causes many people to be just standing there doing nothing because there are just too many people that are working. And then understaffing is the opposite, uh, where you have not enough people to cover all of the duties. So what ends up happening is that a few pe there are just a few people that are super super busy because there are there are not enough people that are that can um, that are no, or better said um, there are too many duties and not that many people that can that are helping to do them okay so that's overstaffing and understaffing just in case you don't remember and discuss your choices with the class okay so provide the schedule to your employee quickly find a method to communicate quickly with employees Take working preferences into account. Schedule having your employee strength in mind. Allow for changes in the schedule. And prevent absenteeism using phone reminders. So these are some of the strategies that you can implement. And you're going to consider which ones would be more effective. Do we understand the vocabulary here? With the four schedule, having your employees a stretch in mind. I don't know what is that. Strength. 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 Um, strength. Not, not strange. Strength. 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 Yeah, strength. Strength is something that makes you strong. Okay, something that makes you strong. Okay, so. So having your employees, um, the their the strong points in your mind. Does that make Did sense? Could you repeat, repeat, please, the pronunciation because I I hear the similar as strange. Okay. okay. Yeah. No, it's not strange. Strange is um, is extraño, right? Um, but um, this is strength strength you have to pronounce the th at the end strength and then you put the s strengths strengths so strength strength okay although it's only one syllable Okay, so I, I'm, I'm dividing it just 
for a matter of the, the purpose of getting you guys to understand it a little bit better. But the actual word is only one syllable. Okay, so it's just strengths. One syllable, strengths. Okay. Teacher, what is the meaning of the sentence number three? Taking work preferences into account. Uh, sorry, working preferences into account. So basically, um, you know, everybody has preferences to work. Some people like to work more in the morning. Some people work like to work better in the afternoons. Um, some people like to work better in the afternoon, is or at night, in the night. Um, some people like to have, um, you know, a, a long lunch hour. And even if they have to finish work later, some people don't like to have long lunch hours and they prefer to have, you know, just a short mini breaks and then leave very quickly, right? Some people prefer to, live, to work only during the week from Monday to Friday. Some people don't mind working on weekends, et cetera. That's a work preference, right? Or working preferences. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And the pronunciation of the absent times in sentence number six. Oh, absenteeisms. Absenteeism. Absenteeism. I, I know it's a weird, Absenteeism. it's not a very common word, let's say, but it's pronounced absenteeism. Uh, I'm working right now and I have um, 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, uh, left or that or what? 10, 15 right minutes now. or what? I okay. need almost 10 or 15 minutes because I need to scan documents and uh, pay codes. Okay, so you're going to be leaving in 10 or 15 minutes yeah. or you're going to be... Oh, no, I need to leave right now. Oh, okay. And then you're going to come back? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. No problem. Thanks. Okay, so, um, yeah. So returning to what we were saying before, um, this is pronounced absenteeism. Absenteeism. Yeah. Absenteeism. Got it? Any yes. other questions that you guys have? Okay, all right. Okay, so these are some of the strategies you're gonna discuss with your partner. What's the best way to avoid overstaffing or understaffing? So let me stop sharing. Well, I'm going to make the breakout rooms. Uh, Warner, are you on two? On two devices or only one? Only one teacher. Okay, okay, great. Um, okay, uh, and I'm going to give you, I would say, um, 10 minutes, or no, probably less, we'll do eight minutes. Okay, so here we go. Let's open up all the rooms. Warner, you having problems? Jose, are you there? Uh, I can't hear you, you're muted. Yes, Detroit, I'm here. 
Just that I don't have any pop-up to accept it. Oh, that's weird. Okay. All right, let's do something. I'm going to sign you right now to a room. Do not accept the invitation. And then I'm going to sign you back again to the room you were supposed to be in. Okay. So, all right. So now you should be assigned. Okay, Jose. Um, all right, let's try this again. I'm going to sign you, but don't accept the invitation. Okay. Um, and don't don't accept it. Don't accept it. Okay. Then I'm going to move you to the one you're supposed to be in. Okay. Now it says room four. Yeah. That's okay. Right. Go, go for it. Room. Go to room four. Okay. teacher is coming yeah <laughs> hello teacher <laughs> teacher is here yeah <laughs> okay uh, teacher i will be honest i was reading an article of bank curricula so i don't hear what's going to do uh on this group so oh. i don't know if you can explain it please okay uh let me share So it says, work in your assigned breakout room with a partner which you are in. Discuss which of these strategies you and your partner consider effective to avoid overstaffing and understaffing. So you're gonna discuss which of these strategies would be better to avoid overstaffing and understaffing and discuss your choice with the class. So once you have chosen which one's the best one, you're going to report back to the class. Does that make okay. sense? Yes, yes, it's true. All right. Great. Okay, so go ahead, go for it. Please. It's in page number 28, I think, if you have the manual. You have a, a much personal and you can, uh, uh, you can, well, we can uh, decide other, other, um, other scale or time because we have a much um, option, maybe. Mm -hmm. Teacher, the, the third sentence, take working preference into, into account, es como Tomar en cuenta las preferencias de los trabajadores. Right, yeah. Uh -huh. The preferences sí. of when the employees want to work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. For me, it's overstaffing. Overstaffing. Yes. Okay. Because when you don't have much personnel, it's difficult. Uh, we decide. Okay, and the next one, could you have in your employees the strength? I don't remember what this is, mm -hmm. a strength? Strength. 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 Uh -huh. Strength. Strength. Um, strength. Um, como sería como... Fortalezas. Teniendo, ajá, pero la, la teniendo, teniendo en cuenta la fortaleza, fortaleza de, los... De, de los empleados. Ajá. Uh -huh. Overst mm -hmm. Overstaffing, maybe. Or mm -hmm. understaffing. A method to find a method to communicate quickly with the employees, yes. Yes, for. Uh, 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 
uh, this is uh, th this is very common to to for example the people when, when they when the people were in the United States uh, for example when it is raining they it, it is common that the boss call at the same at the, this moment well it's raining that's why you we we don't need to come at the office for example this is a an, a, a method they call in this a specific moment <laughs> and for example other thing is well this is slow now that you must to go at the house a verb a verbal a, a, and another one is call the employees yeah Under but will you use overstaffing on or, or understaffing or both okay. which yes. strategies do you and your partners consider uh, the effective to avoid overstaffing and understaffing. Mm -hmm. I guess to overstaffing. Do you, do you know what it means? Yeah, yeah yes, okay. yes. Yeah. In I'm so my... familiar with those uh, words because I work on concern. So you have to be. Uh, watching that you don't have overstaffing because you, your company is losing the money. Yes. <laughs> and you are understaffing, you're losing the money too because the calls uh, are not as well. And that's right. Uh, in my experience, I think is the number four instead of having your. In this way, if you have a correct employees in the correct position, yeah. uh, maybe you're going to get an excellent product productivity production. And then it, the this sentence I think contribute contribute with overstaffing. Contribute. 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 Okay. Okay. Over staffing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Over staffing. Over staffing or, sta or staffing? Over staffing, then? Yeah? Over staffing. No, staffing. 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 Ah, staffing. Ah, the staff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Number number four, uh, schedule having and uh, your employees strains strains in mean in, in mind. Uh, Urban. Hi. Hi. Are you finished or what? Sorry. Are you finished or what? Yes, yes, yes. Number five. Okay. Okay, good. Excellent. All right. Uh, I'll see you in the main room in a moment then. Okay, there's no problem. Hello, Jose, you're back. Hello? Oh, he's not back. <laughs> okay.
Okay. All right, guys. Um, so I'm guessing that you all had the opportunity of discussing um, with your classmates. Um, so let's talk about it. Um, so, okay, so here we go. So tell me, in your opinion, which of the strategies um, did you consider that is the most effective to avoid overstaffing and understaffing? What do you say it's provide the schedule to your employees quickly? Find a method to communicate quickly with employees. Um, take working preferences into account. And schedule having your employees' strengths in mind. Allow for changes in the schedule and prevent absenteeism uh, using phone reminders. So let's start with group number one, which was, let's see. Um, let's see who was group number one. Just give me a moment. Um, Yvonne, Yvonne and Nat Natalia. Okay, teacher. Uh, we choose uh, three of of the of those sentences. Uh, for us, uh, sentence number one: provide this schedule to your employees quickly is a good strategy because uh, you need to provide uh, all the activities and the schedule for uh, all the employees because uh, they have um, uh, to know uh, very quickly all the activities that they have to do. And number two, find a method to communicate quickly with employees because communication is very, very important uh, in, the, in, the, in every company. Okay. And uh, which is another one, and I don't know if uh, Natalia wants to share the last one, or I don't know if you want that I can finish. Sorry, I have some problem with the internet. It's okay. Yeah, go for it. No problem. <laughs> but um, uh, okay, and explain. Uh, we choose uh, the the best the bueno the 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 best strategy and i think that the the six and the two that is the be the better method for the two is find a method to communicate quickly with employees uh, and the six is prevent absenteeism using formal reminders is it, uh, it's like um the six complete the two mm -hmm. okay like um, because you have you have you using the form reminders is a method that the communication and communication quickly with the employees. So if you had a very communication with them, uh, you uh, provided or, or, or you improve that the that the all the employees communication if uh, is have uh, some problem in the day or they are sick or I don't know many situations that can uh, that que pueden darse <laughs> in the day. Sounds great. Excellent. Okay. All right. Let's uh, move on to the next group, which is group number two. And group number two is um, in Andres Wendy and Werner. Okay, the sixth sentence, teacher. Okay. Okay. The first one. We we choose understaffing. Provide this schedule to your employees quickly, because if everybody has the schedule. Uh, everybody knows which which shifts has 
And the okay. second one, find a method to communicate quickly with employees. I think it's the same that the, the first one, mm -hmm. to avoid understaffing. And I don't know if Werner or, or uh, number number Wendy. three. Uh -huh. okay. Number three is our staffing. Uh, uh, the choice we decide because the take work working preference to account uh, because uh, maybe uh, the personnel. Uh, Maybe we have a ex excellent person is our staffing. And number four is to our staffing. Scale have having your employees is trained in mind. Uh, our staffing too, because uh, when have a much option, uh, maybe uh, can uh, personal re repeat personnel or repeat person because uh, all person in sport is important and all person have a strength in mind. Okay. Uh, Warner, number five or continue. Uh, and number five is understaffing allow for change in the scale. And number six, uh, understaffing two, prevent absences using the phone reminder. Only that teacher. Okay, sounds good. All right, uh, group number three, Heidi and Jerry. Okay, for us, we saw that some, some of those rules are really important for overstaffing on, on all this understaffing. For example, for, provide the schedule for the employees quickly that help us to, for the employees act fast. Uh, uh, any change of the process that the company have that is very common and when, and for example, in the United States, uh, you, you can see at the schedule, they change at the first at the first hour of day, at the end of the day, the, the employees go at the schedule, they, they, they know in that moment, if they are going to have, uh, they are going to work at, this, at the next day or how many hours are going to work. And the other example was uh, really important for uh, for both over overstaffing and understaffing. Find a method to communicating communicate quickly with employees. And for example, is and uh, that is really important when you, for example, when and there is a problem with the weather, for example and you are working outside and you in, the, in that moment can call the employees and tell, okay, guys, we don't, we have problem. We don't have work for today, for example. And you can avoid understaffing or, or overstaffing in that way. And the other one, the number three, they work in preference into account into account for example this is really important when you 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 must to avoid uh, overstaffing that way you can organize the the the, the employees around this preference and they want to be at the early at the day or late at the day for example and now my Heidi is going to continue with the other ones. Okay, number four, schedule having your employee strengths in mind. We consider uh, it would be a good strategy with uh, when you don't, uh, when you got understaffing. And number five, allow for changes in schedule uh, that might, might 
be good uh, with overstaffing because you have enough personnel. And number six, prevent absentees using phone reminders. Uh, you can use this strategy when you have understaffing because you have to make sure that, that the person that you count on is going to go to work. Right, of course. Okay, sounds good. All right, group number four, uh, Jose and Luis. Okay, teacher, we choose the number four uh, to okay. is uh, a schedule of having your employees strength uh, in mind. So, is because when you work in a group, um, all of the group uh, has uh, have skills and abilities to do whatever work that is assigned, and everyone has the same lot. But we really know that some person are best on um, different skills and abilities. So that is uh, for us is the best, uh, the number four. Sounds good. Okay. Um, all right, group number five, Edgar and Irene. Okay. <clears throat> oh, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay. No okay. I, I consider that, uh, that to avoid overstaffing, it, it, it is necessary to, to program taking into account the strengths of your employees and establishes, establish an efficient communication method. Uh, the lack of personnel or employees often generates over time and is, is an in, in the indicator that's alone, evaluating the, the needs of the company and the the full fulfillment of the company goals. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. All right, that's it? Yeah. Um, no, I'm just wondering if you, you okay. were finished. Okay, sounds good. All right, in that case, uh, we'll have group number six now. Ana Claudia and Irvin. Okay. Uh, Irvin, we were discussing it. all of them are very important, but two of them are uh, uh, important. The, the number one is provide the schedule to your employees quickly. And the other one is the number five, but Providing the schedule to the employees quickly allows them to uh, take in consideration of and stuff like that. I don't know if Erwin wants to explain the number five. Okay, because it is a restaurant and we don't know when we have much customer and uh, we can change the schedule in, in that moment or in the future, because the customer is the most important in the, in the business, okay? Mm -hmm. That is what we think that the number five teacher is uh, one of the, in, is uh, the most important because uh, allowing changes in the schedule uh, give us the opportunity to, uh, in case uh, there is, not uh, activity, too much activity in a specific day, so they can uh, consider to reduce uh, personnel in that day or maybe in that uh, time frame, that shift. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Excellent, guys. Very, very good, bravo. Okay, all right, having said that, Let's go on now to our next part, which we're going to be looking at our conversation. Okay. This conversation, before anything, uh, we're gonna be discussing two questions. How are employees monitored at your company? And 
What kind of documentation is used in your company to make sure employees are doing a good job? So tell me, how are our employees monitored at your company? You guys want to share with me? I'm sure you have many, um, many stories about this. Mm -hmm. How do you, how are employees monitor at your company? Well, in my case, it's sure because um, then the area is collection. We have a system. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a platform that is uh, monitoring all the people when say the calls, when go to the bathroom, when you have a lunch, when you have a rest. When you have when have a wrap in the in the or the 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 digestion or the communication with the, some clients, mm -hmm. and they have many options that that they use to monitoring the use of and these systems uh, have a the finish of the day or no not finish in a day each hour of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you have you can. Uh, obtain, obtain, obtain a report, and this is the production of, me, of the each people of the each uh, assessor. The the so, what of each person of each person? Uh huh. You have the production. The what? The production that the productivity. Productivity. Okay. <laughs> okay. So how do we pronounce production? Production. 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 Yes, you know, right? But so. the, the me but the 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 word is the uh, productivity. Because the productivity of the people in the day. Oh yes, you're right. Productivity, yes, but, but the production. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um Okay. Um, all right, excellent. What about uh, the others? Tell me a little bit about your place of work. Reese, how do they monitor your work? Um, in my case, with my team, I have uh, two KPIs for the um, specific um, process I need to know, for, for example, the inventory um, rotation. I forget the word teacher. <laughs> yes, inventory rotations, that means how many um, um, invent, um, days of inventory we have in a specific time. Okay. Uh, in the door is um, a, a client satisfaction level um, that are the uh, two most important KPIs. And for the people who work in the production area, they we have a system to monitoring the production that they are making in real time. Every the hour the, they are scanning how the production is in that hour and the um, um, quality control are uh, checking in different points of the uh, production pro production process and reporting what is happening. Okay, sounds good. Um, and what kind of documentation is used in your company to make sure that employees are doing their a good job? Um, we have uh, uh, different reports of uh, uh, different machines. We, for example, for the uh, machine that is uh, working every day, we have uh, uh, forms they have to fill in the system, we use a SAP system and we are checking in the system. We don't use uh, too much uh, 
a paper, for example. Okay. And the um, quality control, they have a, a different kind of format, um, a virtual format to, to report the, um, the job. Okay, sounds good, excellent. Okay, yep. now here we have the conversation between um, the kitchen manager and Mary. So let's take a look at the conversation and you can read it after me. Okay, here we go. Where's Mario? Where's Mario? Where is Mario? Where is Mario? Where is Mario? Where is Mario? He is late for his shift. He is late, he is for, his late for his shift. shift. Mario? 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 Goodness. 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 I got a call that he is very sick. I, I got, got a call that he, he is very sick. sick. Very sick. I should have told you earlier. I should have told, should you. Have told you earlier. Yeah, I told you earlier. earlier. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. He should have called me directly. He should have, he called, should have called, called me directly. directly. If he had called to my phone, if he, he had called, called to my phone, my phone, I could have found a substitute by now. I could have I found, found, found a substitute by, by now. now. <laughs> I have time this afternoon. I have, I have time, time this, this afternoon. afternoon. Let me cover for him. Let, Let me, me cover, cover for, for, him. for him. Okay, very good. All right, any questions about vocabulary? Any questions? No questions? No, you sure? <laughs> Okay. All right, very good. Um, okay, all right. So what we're gonna do now is, I want you guys um, to work with a partner and you're gonna be, according to this conversation, well, first of all, you're gonna be practicing the conversation and then you're going to be completing these, uh, uh, these statements, okay? So I'm going to get you to work with a partner about five minutes to be able to um, do the conversation and then complete the sentences, all right? So right now I'm gonna get you to work. Um, hold on, give me a moment. Okay, five minutes guys, here we go. We're opening up the rooms. <laughs> Uh, questions? Yes, yes, some conversation. I'm going to. I'm looking for my. My manual. Man, my manual. Yeah, for. I have time this afternoon. Let me cover for him. Okay. Okay. Where's Mario? He's late for his chip. Mario, goodness. I good I call that he's very sick. I should have told you earlier. Don't worry, he should have called me directly if he had called to my phone. I could have found a substitute by now. 
I have time this afternoon. Sorry, I have time this afternoon. Let me cover for him. Let me cover okay. for him. Okay, yeah. other time? Sure. Uh, over time, other time? You have uh, to no, answer. I need the... you to complete the sentences. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I I choose the uh, should have told should have told you Sorry, I am I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, in address, he should, should have called call my little kid. Mm, I call, have found, found a substitute by now. If, I could have found the yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. Yes. And the teacher is coming. Oh, I'm finished. All right. So you finished um, the, the statements? Yes. yes, teacher. Oh, OK, great. I'll see you in the main room then. OK. OK, teacher. Bye. Okay, guys, so you're going to quickly give me the answers. Okay, so you should all practice the conversation and complete this, the structures here. Yes, Chair. So um, let's start with the first one. Um, so I... I I should, should have told have you earlier. earlier. Should have told you. Like that? Yes. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Next. Number two. He should have he called, should have have called, called me, me directly. Should. Have. Called. Like that? Yes. 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 Very good. Okay. And finally, if he had called to my phone, I could, I could have, have a, um, a substitute by now. Substitute by now. Could found. Like that? Yes, yeah, sure. yeah. Yes. All right, great. Okay, so um, any questions about this um, so far? No? Mm -hmm. Okay. We will learn tomorrow about this structure, okay? 
what what is this this structure about the should have told should have called could have found etc cetera, etc cetera. we're going to be learning a little bit about this tomorrow okay but in the meantime we're going to leave things here and um i'm just gonna get you guys to work on the platform uh remember you can work out you can start working on the final exam already uh you don't have you you know you don't have to finish it but you should be working on it because basically you have like six days no sorry um eight days left uh for you guys to finish everything on the platform so it's really really important that you guys do that um early so you're not rushing at the very end okay La, let me take uh, the attendance one more time um all right so we're going to start with ana claudia present teacher javid no um, andres present teacher all right uh, diego sorry you tenes orlando no eh, edgar menjivar present teacher eh, edith orlini i guess not urban Present teacher. Okay, Fabiola, I guess not. Um, Heidi? Present teacher. All right, Irene? Present teacher. All right, Ivan? <laughs> Ivan? No, okay. Uh, Josue? Present teacher. All right, uh, Juan Francisco? I guess not, right? Uh, jury? Present teacher. All right. Luis? Present teacher. Okay. Uh, Manuel Alejandro, I guess not. Natalia? Present teacher. Okay. Wendy? Wendy? Present teacher. All right, good. Warner? Present teacher. Okay, Yvonne? Present. All right, Edgar Enriquez. Eh, Eli? Uh, Jose Mora Montes? And Jose Ayala? Present teacher. All right, excellent. Okay, guys, so that will be all for today. Don't forget that we need the documents. So your homework is gonna be that. Um, if you haven't given in the documents, Give, make sure you have them before noon tomorrow. And if um, you're not sure about it, then call your, your company to make sure that they have sent it, okay? So that's it, guys. It's been a pleasure. Take care and um, have a good night. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 B